Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here, another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to resolve issues you might have with your Windows 10 firewall if it is unable to turn on. So this is a very straightforward tutorial we're going to be getting into today and most of the process we're going to be into will be automated so that should be comforting to most of you guys. So since there's a wide variety of issues that could be causing firewall malfunctions on a Windows computer, um, I am going to be showing or showcasing a third party application that I think could hopefully resolve the issue for you guys. Um, this program is completely free. I believe there is a professional option, but I'm going to show you where to download the free version. And keep in mind you can uninstall this program after you're done resolving your firewall issues. You don't have to keep it installed on your computer. So anyway, we're going to navigate over to this website I'm going to have in the description of this video. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of how this website appears to be, but the tool that is present with on it is pretty powerful. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the installer section, which is about 20 megabytes. I'm going to download directly off of MajorGeeks.com, which hosts a lot of other applications and programs. So you can download it directly off their site as well. So I'm just going to left click on the uh, option that says download at major geeks. And you can see this is a fairly regularly updated program. It was just updated about five days before it's recording. And it does list it as freeware. And we can see it's downloading right in the bottom of our screen. Should be a fairly quick download, I should say. And from there it's going to be pretty straightforward. So once the executable is finished downloading, you want to left click on run. If you receive a user account control pop up, select yes. Okay, we'll get the intro to the program asking us to install it. So to get through this installer, just left click on next. Keep the install location the same. If you want to change it, you can. I don't really see why you would want to change it. We get next. We want to create a shortcut. Yes. And just gives you a summary of what's going to be installed. And then just click next to proceed. What's nice about this program is they don't bundle any other applications or other programs you have to uncheck. So pretty straightforward. And I will create a desktop icon and I do want to open up the program when it completes installation. So again, left click on next. And then I'm going to left click on finish again. So now it'll just check for updates, making sure the program is up to date. So while we are recommended to use safe mode of networking in order to set up the environment to run this program, I'm just going to use the normal Windows operating environment. Um, but if you want to, um, if it doesn't work for you in this environment, then I would recommend restarting the safe mode and then trying to run this tool. So before we actually jump into it, I do want to go over a few tools that are built within this program. Um, generally, it seems to be targeted more towards malware and other virus infections, like resolving issues regarding that. So that's definitely a consideration to make because I know a lot of ransomware or other malicious software could tamper with the Windows firewall. So you can run these independent tools and actually open up a pre-scan if you wanted to. Um, we can also check the file system if you wanted to check that first. So there are a lot of different tools that are included in this program. And then we could also back up and restore our registry through here. And we can also restore back to previous restore points if we have the CD or DVD. So we want to restore back. Well, our system restore is turned off, but we would be able to access system restore hopefully through there. And then a repair option. So please heed this warning. It's really not designed for Windows servers. So most 99% of you guys probably are not running a Windows server, but just keep that in mind here. So you want to left click on this button that says Open Repairs. And we see there's a lot of settings that are set to be repaired. We want to only select a few of them just to be safe. We don't need to select all of them. So I'm actually going to unselect the entire list here because I don't think we need to overkill it. And if you wanted to go through and independently check certain ones, so what we're going to do is left click on reset service permissions. So we're going to check that one. We're also going to click on the little box next to repair WMI. 
Then we want to left click on repair Windows firewall. And then you also want to left click on this little box next to reset file permissions. So essentially we're going to select 2, 3, 5, and 6. So there should be four of them here. If you want to select more, I mean go for it, but I don't think they'll be necessary in this video. So at this point what you want to do is left click on start repairs, this button right down here. So it shouldn't take too long to run, just be patient with it. And I do like the speed, it usually is pretty quick. So I don't know if it goes without saying, but this is not a promotion of this program. I just wanted to make that clear. I just really like what it does. And it does cover a lot of other helpful tools as well that's bundled into it. And I don't think I've ever really showcased it on this uh, channel before. But I thought now would be a great time to, especially when you're trying to repair Windows firewall errors. So this might take a little bit of time to run, so just be patient. And once it is done scanning and repairing any Windows firewall problems we have, I will be right back. Okay everyone, I'm back. So we see that the system needs to restart for changes to take effect. Would you like to restart now? Left click on yes. So the system is going to restart. And once the computer has successfully booted back into Windows, I will be right back. Hello everyone, so we logged back in and everything I would hope would be okay with you guys. So there's no guarantees in this tutorial and again if it doesn't work for you in the normal Windows environment, I'd recommend booting into safe mode and then try and run this application. Um, I, what I found it to be a fairly safe tool and while there are no guarantees it does seem to work in many cases for me. So just keep that in mind and I hope again this worked out for you guys and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.